Walk with me. Yahweh, our Lord, our owner. How excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, as thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemies and the avenger. When I considered thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the messengers or the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Excuse me. All sheep and oxen, yeah, and the beast of the field. The fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the path of the sea. Oh, Yahweh, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, those of you on TikTok, YouTube, and we thank God for you. Yes. And finally, deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the hearts of men and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me in my seed forever, that we go not astray henceforth and forevermore. A prayer of Abram, Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, a beautiful day, a beautiful day, beautiful evening, beautiful night, beautiful, 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 because our God is beautiful. Yes, even the beauty of his holiness, his fairness, his, his ways unto the children of men. Yes, God is beautiful. Yes, there's more than just beautiful than the eyes behold. There's a beauty, a beauty of spirit. There's a beauty of thought. There's a beauty, and there's beauty in things. Ah, when we say grace, we're talking about favor. She walked favor. He walked favorably. He done this favorably. He spoke in a favorable manner. I mean, to bring it down into everyday terms, favorable is what the word grace means. Are you saved by favor? See, the play with words will get you every time. Yes, they will get you every time. So let's not play with words. Let's sublimate these words and bring them into today's prospectus. Because the fact is, is that words can, old English words, people have made them to mean whatever they want you to think it means. Yes, and some even have made up their own ways of doing a uh, defining things that's not the way it goes we have to do things in the way that we all come to one understanding and if we come to one understanding then we have to have one definition yes yes and now we're in the book of jubilees chapter 10 we're still in chapter 10 and verse 30 43 yes and after this here here's uh, abram he after he took the axe to his father's idols which cannot speak talk nor eat he found out they cannot eat either. So he's always, he proved his point. Have you ever proved your point to these crosses of Isis on the cross and, you know, the big idols they have and then the Buddhist idols? Can they eat? Can they drink? That rock that lies in Mecca, can it eat, drink? Does it bless? Or is it some type of sci-fi thing? Have we ever proved these things? I think not, because many of us, we're afraid of the multitude. Many of us, we're afraid of what others might say that we have held them in high esteem. God regardeth no position of man. He regardeth not even man in his status. No, and the same thing, we should be as our God, if we believe on him. If you call him Allah, you should believe on him who has made all things. Now. Getting to the word, Jubilee, I mean, Jasher, Jasher, Jasher chapter 10, verse 43. And Abram answered his father and said unto him, How canest thou then serve these idols in whom there is no power to do anything? Now, these are things that are tangible, we see. Many of us, we serve things that are tangible, and we see and we put our trust in them, whether we, we justify many things from singers to politicians to 
uh, rich people and all kind of things. We make them our deities, our lords, our owners. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And he says now, can these idols in which thou trustest deliver thee? Can they hear thy prayers when thou callest upon them? Can they deliver thee from the hands of thy enemies, or will they fight thy battles for thee against thy enemy? Now, you say the God that answers by fire, let him be God. This is one of the things that Elijah said to the children of let be God. Yes. He says that, that thou shouldest serve wood and stone, which can neither speak nor hear. I mean, these things, these devils or these demons have filled the minds of men, have swayed the minds of men to the point where they actually make fools out of even the wisest of them. Just because you're wise in philosophy and wise in uh, political things and wise in sowing and wise and all these things, you can be dumb in the things of God. This is what he means by wisdom. Wisdom in the things of God. Wisdom in his law, statutes, ordinances, laws, and commandments. Yes, this is what he wants us to be wise in. Your status in life is not wisdom. It's to help you here in life and aid those around you because of the things that you know how to do. But to know God, you have to work out your own soul salvation like one of the authors said in the uh, New Testament or whatever that is, that fake testament or half, half, half truthful testament. But anyway, verse 44, and now surely it is not good for thee, nor for the sons of men that thou art connected with thee to do these things. You are so silly. This is what Abraham said to his father. Now, was he dishonored his father? No, he was telling him the truth. Now, so foolish or so short of understanding that you will serve wood and stone and do after this manner? And forget that I am God who made heaven and earth, who created you in the earth, and thereby bring a great evil upon your souls in this manner by serving stone and wood. Now, this is what happened throughout all the world. Now, it doesn't make the other, the aggressor, better than those who are aggressed or colonized or subdued. It doesn't make them better. But because this happened, it's to make the one that is subdued or colonized better. That they might go back and subdue those that have done these things. Because pagan against pagan is really going to rot to no good. We have to call it is what it is. Yes. And did not our fathers in the days of old sin in this manner? And the I am God of the universe brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed the whole earth? Did not the God of the universe bring the colonizer to the Americas? Did not the God of the universe bring the colonizers to the Africa, African countries and all over in Asia and all over in the parts where it is Africa, but they call it Southeast Asia or Middle East? Did not God bring the Arabs there? Pagans against pagans. Because those of you who do call yourselves by his name have allowed yourselves to even come to the point where you serve dumb, stupid idols, wood and stone. And for the AI, that's what it means, things that cannot speak nor talk, inanimate objects. Now, the fact is, it is foolish to worship these things. It is foolish to worship these things. And this is what brings the wrath of God upon most of the people. You notice the first commandment says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That means in whatever form, shape, or manner there is, no other gods. Even in the book where they try to make this Esau's God, he even says, if you love mother, brother, sister, even your own life more than me, you're idolary. You, you're not worthy of me. This is what God is saying. And we do not get it. We fear, they teach us on television to fear death, to fear life, to fear poverty, to fear pain, to fear all these things, to fear sickness, 
when God said you will inherit the whole earth in the long run, not the here and by and by and the pie in the sky, it's earth. Is the meek going to answer? The meek is going to inherit. Earth is where God is going to come down and subdue all his enemies. Earth is where God is going to cause even those of his children to inherit and rule for eternity. Earth. It's not written, it's not written, it's written in your book of Revelation. It's written in the book of Daniel, the book of Ezekiel, all the books. No, we have no sky daddy, my friend. No sky daddy. <coughs> Excuse me. We have no sky daddy. No, 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 no. He's not a sky daddy. He's right here. He's in another realm where you cannot touch him. He don't want to show himself to you. You ain't going to see him because you're too nosy. He don't want nothing to do with you until you repent and get that which is right and do your works over again if you have any works. Yes, that's what he wants. Now let's continue. And Abram hastened and sprang from before his father and took the hatchet from his father's largest idol, which Abraham broke it and ran away. <laughs> A 50-year-old man running from his daddy. Woo. Okay. And Terah, seeing all that Abraham had done, hastened to go from his house. And he went to the king, and he came before Nimrod and stood before him. And he bowed down to the king, and the king said, What dost thou want? And he said, I beseech thee, my lord, to hear me. Now, 50 years back, a child was born to me, and thus he has done to my gods. Oh, he's going to protect his gods. Now he's going to his other god. Okay, come on here. And thus he has done to my gods, and thus he has spoken. Now, therefore, my lord and my king, send for him that he may come before thee. And judge him according to the law that we may be delivered from his evil. You have to realize every hierarchy, every kingdom that have arose wants to make themselves a god. Whether it's Arabs with their different gods that they have, their different, all these different men that they worship and will give their life for. Then you have the Christians that will give their life for idols and they, they say in the name of Isis and all this stuff and never got them anywhere. You don't even know what's behind even the things that do happen. But if it does, God's word is what he gives us as a marker for everything. His law, statute, commandments, judgments. Yes, even his ordinances. Those are the markers. Those are the measures that shall be judged Every man shall be judged. That is the measure. The books which shall be open are the books of judgment, the book of remembrance, of the deeds of men. These are the books. But as far as that one book that Moses received, not only Moses just received a regathering of the books. That's what Moses see because all was lost through Egypt. I wouldn't be surprised that Egypt even sublimated those laws to give their 42 disciplines or whatever. It's not, it's, it's very likely. And made things that they have perverted their own, just like other, these other religions have done. Taken and denominated the things of God. Yes. Let's continue. And the king sent three men, he sent three men of his servants, and they went and brought Abram before the king. And Nimrod and all his princes and servants were that day sitting before him. And Terah sat also before him. And the king said to Abram, what is this that thou hast done to thy father and to his gods? And Abram answered the king in words that he spoke to his father. He said, the large God that was with him in the house did to them what thou hast heard. And the king said to Abram, had they power to speak, eat, and to do as thou hast said? And Abraham answered the king, saying, If there will be no power in them, then why dost thou serve them? Oh, he come to the power, more power in the, in, 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 the, in the land, even Nimrod, the one who had the tower built. And God, he, he should know who God is because God struck it down. Why dost thou serve him and cause the sons of men to err through thy follies? Why do you create these crosses and these images of different saints in this rock? 
and cause the sons of men to error through your foolishness. You call upon names that God haven't even prescribed. And what happened? You cause men to error. Parents, you do not teach your children, even from the day that they have come out of Egypt. Parents did not teach their children anything but went a whoring after other gods. And say, this be your God. Now, here's Abram. What does he do? He says in verse 55, he says, Dost thou imagine that they can deliver thee or do anything small or great that thou shouldest serve him? And why would thou not sense the God of the whole universe who created thee in the whole power? It is to kill and keep alive. Oh, foolish, simple, ignorant king. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. He, he, no respect to persons before God. Do you know this thing causes God to even jump back and ah, oh, just want to love you because you do not have fear of him that can kill the body, but you have fear of him who can kill the body and both cast your soul into an eternal torment. Now, he told the king, you're foolish, you're ignorant. Woe unto you forever. I thought thou wouldest teach thy servants the upright way, but thou hast not done this but has filled the whole earth with thy sins and the sins of thy people. Now, this is a prophet right here. Not afraid. Who have followed thy ways. Dost thou not know or hast thou not heard that this evil which thou doest, our ancestors sinned therein in the days of old? He's talking about every nation upon the earth. You don't have to be Israel. You've been taught. Your ancestors have been taught. What God has commanded, his law, his statutes, his ordinances, they have been taught. Shem, Japheth, even Ham. You have no excuse before the Most High. He just chose Israel to be an example, but that's not what it's really supposed to be. The remnant of Israel, because he knows the rest of us are going to fail in this whole thing. You failed in keeping his laws. You failed in keeping his commandments. Failed in his ordinances. Failed in his statutes. And many of you will continue to fail and try to justify yourselves in many ways and trying to sublimate and trying to excuse yourself. It's not going to happen. God already got him pegged out. <laughs> you just treading water, brother, sister. Now, he says now, I thought that thou wouldest teach thy servants the upright way, but thou hast done this and have filled the whole earth with thy sins, the sins of thy people who have followed thy ways. Dost thou not know or hast thou not heard that this evil which thou doest our ancestors sin there in the days of old and the eternal God brought the waters of the flood upon them and destroyed them all also the whole earth on their account and will thou and thy people rise up now to do like unto this work in order to bring down the anger of the I am of the universe and to bring evil upon thee and the whole earth. Now, therefore, put away this evil deed which thou doest and serve the God of the universe as thou hast in this in his hands. And then it will be well with thee. And if thy wicked heart will not hearken to my words to cause thee forsake thy evil ways to serve the eternal God, then wilt thou die in shame in the latter days. Thy and thy people and all who are connected with thee, hearing thy words or walking in thy evil ways. And when Abraham ceased speaking before the king and princes, Abraham lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Oh, Tata and Zombie, seeth all the wicked, and he will judge them. Yes. Before we continue with verse 12, chapter 12, that'll be it. as the Most High willeth. Consider your ways. Consider where you get your doctrines from. Turn back to the Most High, who is your only way out. And with that, we're going to say, repent. <laughs>